Yep. If you keep holding off because you think you're not ready or you're not lean enough or you're comparing yourself to other people there, the, the whole moral of the story is someone will be leaner than you, but also yep. you don't know where they are in their journey. 100%. And it doesn't matter. Yep. <laughs>
And if we go too hard in bikini, we've got no entry level. And if you want to go harder, girls, um, jump into sports. Mm. Jump into fitness. Mm. Yeah. Or figure. Yeah. Or going. figure. Yeah. <laughs> it's a big jump from bikini yeah. to figure. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. So it's not going to go ahead because I was thinking, oh, that'd be really cool if we had that. But also... There almost has to be a line where you're like, oh, are we diversifying too much? Yeah. You know, yeah. so, yeah. So the big thing in bikini is the best body doesn't necessarily win. Mm. It's the best body for the criteria. For the criteria, yeah. And, you know, I'm going to forget 10 years ago, the, the judges at a show were just going, well, we've got to let that girl win because she's got the best body. And I, I was like on the, on the panel, I said, uh, I'm sorry, it doesn't match the criteria. I don't yeah. care if she's the best body. She's not even in the top five. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so uh, they finally got them out of the top five. I said, it's just not the top five. That is not the criteria. Mm -hmm. So we got her out of the top five. She was in fitness as well, which we weren't aware of. She wins, she wins fitness. Yeah. So then yeah. they know where they actually fit. Yeah, 100%. I've seen it a few times, actually, even with my own, own girls. Like, I kind of end up bringing them in a little bit too lean for bikini. or And then, you know, and they'll go, how come this person beat me, but she mm -hmm. didn't have abs and whatever? And I'm like, because... You don't need them for bikini no. and you have to convince your bikini girls, you know, to stop pushing to get leaner. Mm, yep. You've actually got to say to them, woo up, yep. you're ready, like you're, you're baked. It's kind of like a, um, like a very fine art to getting is, bikini it, it right. It is, absolutely. Mm. And you can just, um, like when they walk and they've got a few lines here or there, that, that's kind of okay Gentle, because it's, yeah. it's about when you're standing still mm. and we're looking at that particular pose. Not too we're not, sharp. Yeah, not too sharp. So if you've got like hands up pose, you're going to have some stuff on the, happening on the back. Mm. You just can't help it. You're fairly lean. So mm. that's okay. Mm. But you turn around all of a sudden, we've got lines in the legs, mm. lines across the abs, cap shoulders. Okay, you're in sports. Yeah. yeah, and also girls don't do bikini and fitness as options. Mm. They're two worlds apart. Okay, mm. you you're placed far down one end and far up another. Uh, or, yeah. yeah, yeah. If you if you kind of you either be kind of bikini sports or you mm -hmm. be sports fitness. Yeah, you just won't be bikini and fitness. Yeah, no. and obviously we've got wellness in between. Wellness kind of is um, uh, the hardness of between sports and bikini, mm. and but with the bigger your, your glutes and your quads dominate your shoulders mm -hmm. is the best way to look at it. Yeah, yeah. that's wellness. Yeah. yeah. I love the wellness category. It's probably mm. my favorite yeah, at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. So <clears throat> let's move on to the next question. What advice do you have for first time competitors worried about coming to their first group posing class? Uh, we've answered this one before, but maybe we can answer it in a, in a roundabout way. Yep. Um, where can they find the full posing class schedule? Okay. So the full posing class schedule is either on our Instagram uh, page which mm -hmm. is icmqld mm -hmm. um the little buttons you got at the top just press one of those buttons oh, yep. yeah, okay. we're there. and then on the closed group page which is icmqld community mm -hmm. um if you join that one we've got it pinned on there as well nice. so the whole entire season's there right now good yeah because yep. i think I, I get that question all the time what's what classes are on this weekend yep. and you're yep. very organized yeah so yeah so like i said the whole 12 14 weeks already done Nice. Um, so what are we, 16 weeks out now, I think, from the first show? Yeah. Six, yeah. So um, the first one is next Sunday. Uh, I don't know which, when this is coming out, but uh, if it's before Sunday. Sunday the 14th of Jan, that's uh, just one a week, just the first two weeks. Uh, Stafford World Gym at 11 o'clock, the following the 21st at World Gym Macrobat. And then boom, it's everywhere. Nice. Yeah. You've yeah. got a really good variety of locations. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So on the Sunday, we go Stafford, Macrobat, Southport, Repeat. Okay. So just every three weeks will be one of that, that venue and then just repeat. Yep. That's nice. Yep. And because Brisbane's so spread out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And exactly. we'll be at um, Muscle Hut uh, every week. Every oh, in Sunny Coast. Yep. Um, yeah. We've got uh, Kerry and Kelly doing classes as well um, every other second weekend. So lots going on. Yep. Nice. And sorry, to your question, um, the fear of coming along. Oh, yes. That one. We've yeah, got... yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just come along. It's kind of like um, back 20 odd year ago, I wanted to do Latin dance. Mm. And I was single at the time. I was going, oh, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I'm so scared. And I finally got the the balls to go. And man, I wish I'd have gone two years earlier. Isn't it it's, like that? Yeah, yeah. So, so girls, seriously, just be brave. Um, even give me a call, 0403 498 Send me an email, um, qld at icompetenatural.com. Let me know you're coming if you're nervous. Um, come and see me straight up and we'll get you unnerved. No prank calls, guys, okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm available. As long, yeah. as if I'm available, I'll answer the phone call or reply to the messages or whatever. You yeah. are very prompt. You're like a bit like me. I think we're kind of a bit obsessed with being available and yeah. being there for yeah. our clients yeah. and, and um, the competitors. Yeah. But, you know, we had like um, 60 to both classes last, last year in December. Mm. Amazing. The number of first-timers was just unbelievable. Your classes have and, been huge lately. Yeah, and yeah. season B. So if you're listening to this and doing season B, even if you're doing 2025, Mm. Come on, class. 
Yeah. You really can't start posing too soon. Agreed. I've got yeah. both my season A and B competitors yeah. in posing already. Yep. If you keep holding off because you think you're not ready or you're not lean enough or you're yep. comparing yourself to other people there, the, the whole moral of the story is someone will be leaner than you, but also yep. you don't know where they are in their journey. 100%. And it doesn't matter. <laughs> yep. And you know, like, um, we, we get the, the, the bigger girls and guys that aren't yeah. ready yet. Um, and no one, like, we're, we're there to help. We're there yeah. to pick people up, not push people down. No one picks on anybody. You're on your own journey. Um, mm. And yeah, there's, no, there's just no issues. Yeah. I think I remember one of my first posing classes, not at um, the one that was, I don't know, where it was Kapalabar or something like that, but this was at Burpengary. And I remember seeing um, off tap there, I remember seeing oh, John yeah, there, yeah. but he was posing yep. and he was in his off season. Yeah. And I knew nothing about what, you know, what condition he had to be in. And I was like, huh. That guy doesn't look like he's going to compete anytime soon. I wonder what he's going to turn out like, you know. <laughs> I wasn't judging. I was just intrigued. Mm. And, uh, you know, and then it was wild because I saw him progress and I was like, oh, shit. Like, <laughs> I was like, I should not have assumed, <laughs> like, this guy is just a weapon. Yeah. But it was just so interesting for that experience, even for myself, to realise I didn't have to be that lean either, that I nope. could go in a bit yep. thicker and, you yep. know, in my off season. So, and yeah. wear what you feel comfortable in. Of course. Just, yeah. Once uh, you do it a few times, you strip right down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and importantly, in the last four weeks, wear what you're going to wear on stage. Of course, yeah. Okay, because you're showing more skin and that might change how we actually have to sort of move you. Yeah. And also, mm -hmm. we had one year, um, finally this girl goes about two weeks after, she goes, can I come and do a uh, posing class in the bikini fitness skinny? So absolutely. Mm -hmm. She came in and she had a big divot sort of like the way she she came in so the way she came was sort of like mm. a bit weird so we actually had to change her other hand yeah we had to hide that and we didn't know that until she until got in the bikini she was in the bikini yeah yeah yep. yeah don't be afraid of mm. things not being exactly where you want them to be you you need that look so that yeah. you can yeah. perfect yep. it awesome love that yeah honestly i was i was shit scared the first yeah. few times yeah but don't be Nah. Don't be, just come along. Have We're some so fun. relaxed. Just We're bring so a big chill. smile. Actually, first time they come, they don't have to smile the first class. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you get to it work out your steps. It is a weird thing to do, hey? Like, yeah. mm -hmm. Work your steps out first, but after the first class, you'll smile. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's compulsory to be yeah. happy. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, actually, here's, my, here's some posing tips. Devil in the detail. Oh, wow. My first one. Smile. Smile and smile. Yeah. So smile outwards, not, not upwards. upwards. Yeah, and also with your nose. Don't smile upwards. <laughs> yeah. Smile outwards. Smile with good energy and smile with confidence. Nice. Okay, so that's my first three tips. Yeah. You can practice your smile in the mirror too as well because I think some people are very self-conscious of their smile and they're yeah. like, I don't like how I smile. And I'm mm. like, well then figure out which part of your smile that you do like. And yeah. it has to be with teeth too because you've yeah. got this tan on. Yes. And, you know, if you're like, you look, this this does not no. No. If it's yeah. teeth, they can see like the white yeah. against the tan. And yeah, yeah I, can't, I can't help but smile on stage. I'm like... Mm. I'm a high as a kite, you know, like I'm having the best time. I'm like, I couldn't stop if I tried, but yeah, that's great. All right, so um, next question. Do you think bodybuilding is a sport for absolutely everyone? That's the first part. Or do you think some people just aren't cut out for it? Um, well, at the end of the day, I suppose you could pick any sport and say, is the human race, could they do that sport? Could it be cycling? Could it be gymnastics? Well, actually, hang on. No, not everyone. Because gymnastics, I used to coach it, but I've got no aerial awareness. Mm. So you want to throw me a double back sole? <laughs> I'm not sure how I'm going to land it. <laughs> <Just> gonna... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so no, it's not, not everything's cut out for everybody. But okay. I, think, I think our sport is. Yeah. I mean, we're not talking about mm -hmm. doing double, triple It's not backwards. rocket science. It's no. not. It's, it's just being consistent. It's like either I can eat this crap or I can eat what's good for me. Mm. Like, am I, am I fueling my body correctly mm. or do I feel, fuel my body and make myself feel like shit? Mm. Um, that's what it comes down to. Yeah. And like when 60, 70% of the uh, population is overweight or obese, clearly we've got a problem. Mm. And that, it's not to say those people can't do it. It's just a case of they're just prepared to eat the maccas, mm. rather than the, just the junk, mm. rather than the good stuff. Yeah. You know, it's just, yeah, everyone's. And a lot of people think they're mentally stuck that way, but it's yeah. these decisions and cultural, it's stuff that yep. we're normalizing and we shouldn't be. Well, that's a damn good point. Because you go back to the 60s, there's a, there's a, a small film, uh, just a, a video, of um, Bondi Beach, about a hundred guys doing activities. Um, yeah. the, the monkey bars, what not, blah, blah, blah. All their shirts off, all lean. Yeah, right. Because back in the day, meat and three veg. 
food, I think, as well back then. It was like, it was definitely thought to be something that, you know, you just you eat and you eat within your budget, within yeah. your means. You yeah. don't, it's not for this. I think now it's like food is used as coping mechanisms and yep. we've seen it all the time. People have shifted more towards these issues with overeating disorders and under eating disorders and stuff. But I think it still it existed back then, but it's now it's just so much bigger because... I think we're just we're making it seem like it's normal and that it's not abnormal to sit on yep. your bum all day and yep. you know eat crisps and drink beer. Yeah, um, and it shouldn't be shamed, so to speak. We're not trying to make fun of people. No, but, but we yeah. want to help them. Like for everyone yeah. that you've helped, you don't shame them. No, fantastic. Come in. Let me get, let me help you. Yeah, you want to This is what we can happy. do for you. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, you know, I was a state member of parliament in my opening speech in 2012. I said eight out of ten diseases are man-made. Yes. In the, what we eat. Yeah. What we eat is 8 out of 10. Mind you, there's also chemicals, things mm. we breathe in that mm. add to the 8 out of 10. Mm. But of the obesity side of things, there's so many cancers and whatnot, it's mm. what we put in our mouth. Even hormone function, I found out as well, like, you know, through my studies. But even people saying things like, I've got a hormonal problem. But people don't realize that hormones are mostly dictated by the way we treat our bodies. So yep. it's not the hormones that come before the food and the exercise. It's the mm. exercise and the food that influences yep. the hormones. Yep. And that's where, you know, a lot of people think, I think that they think they're like special and that they want to have this special thing that exempts them from effort. Mm. And the great thing about bodybuilding is, you you know, as you'd know, you can't hide. You, you like the work you put in is what you get out and yep. you can't hide from that. And so yep. it does reveal a lot of... I think it is suitable for everybody. Yeah. I think that it would take personality shifts and decision shifts and mindset shifts in order to get there. Yeah. So um, it is for everybody and it's the mindset side of things. So yeah. mindset is so important. Right? Mm. Um, I'll give you an example. Back in 2004, my, um, my, my manager went and did a bodybuilding show. So I had a supplement store and studio way back in the day. And he went to down the Sharks Club and he sit on against the wall and he's like, Oh man, this is just, oh, this is the worst, right? He was like that all day. And I'm looking at him just going, dude, what, you went like this yesterday, what the, what the frick is going on here? Mm. He was convinced by his coach that he's going to feel the worst on game day. And it just got into his head. Negativity. And went, yeah, that's right, yeah, I'm just feeling just terrible, man. This is, comes to work the next day and goes, Jace, I think I just made myself feel shit because I was told I was going to feel shit. I was fine. Yeah. I said, you were, mate. You just, yeah. yeah. So it's mindset. Like, you just, you know, like, who's lost some weight and not carried on about it? Mm. Like, oh, man, I just lost five kilos. I feel terrible. No, you just lost five kilos. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. almost, like, two different ways of looking at it. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, so you can look, make it look hard, feel hard when it's actually not. Mm. You know, um, and most of the times it's not. It's just a mindset. Mm. Yeah. Um, I'll use myself as an example on um, show day. Mm. So I, I won't eat the night. I'll eat the night before mm-hmm. and just normal meal. Next morning I'll drink. One of those, that's mm-hmm. actually not coffee or anything, that's actually just, just water, water. <laughs> um, is that's 500 mils, and then I'll have a little bit of this, I'll probably maybe consume half of that throughout the next 12 hours when I do the show, and I do not eat till I get home that night. Yeah. I survive. You are <laughs> on fire on show day, I will say love that. love it, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, you I love to give my all. Yeah. have like this personality, I call you the showman, you're incredible when you've, and the, and the voice, it's so recognisable yeah. as well on, on show day. Well, I had Pete. Pete he really that. wants to do it, doesn't he? He's told me so many times, <laughs> you... Ryan, I'm going to do some. I'm going to do yeah. some of it. <laughs> so he, Pete Moran, I love him. He, he's, he's a character. Yeah, he, he was doing some. Uh, he does all the calls at the posing classes. And I said, mate, you, yeah. want, you want the mic? He's yes. great. I'd love it, love it. And he got on the mic, and his voice is so similar to mine. I'm there at the judges' table. And Pete's over there. People are going. Can't tell I can thing. see Jason without a mic. <laughs> Where's that coming from? Yeah, he did brilliant. He was. He good. knows how to do it. Well, yeah. at least if you lose your voice one day for some weird miraculous reason. You've yep. got a backup. You've got a yep. body double. Yep. You know, you just got to shave his head <laughs> and hope for the best. <laughs> All right. So that's great. Honestly, we always digress from our questions, but um, you know, to bring it back, I, I yeah, I think definitely we could we could say that maybe bodybuilding is a sport for everyone. It's probably a sport that is the my, most diverse in who yep. you know who we can cover. And, and again, girls and might be some guys are here watching on this one as well. It's mindset. It's yeah. just a mindset. You you can make this as hard or as easy as you want. You know, like I, I, I my, my diet's changed over the years from six meals a day to one meal a day. Yeah. Um, that's my mindset. Like, like I said, uh, at the moment, I'm only two meals a day yeah. um, and I don't care where I get my first one. Um, only that I'm out for the, from now till about six o'clock tonight. Mm-hmm. I didn't have my first one. Not my first meal is 11, 12, one, two. I don't care. Yeah. You know, it's a mindset. 
Yeah. Yeah, you've got that incredible, like, I wouldn't even call it, it is discipline, but almost like um, you're steadfast, you're stubborn in what you want to do, and you just, you know, you know what your mission is. Yeah, yeah, and um, well, yeah, just, I, I don't overthink it. Yes, that's yeah. a big part of it too, mm, is the overthinking. Yeah. Well, actually, that's like the posing. It's like, um, okay, girls or guys, bring your left foot in, and you're there going, oh shoot, left Which foot in. Which one's my left foot? <laughs> Don't overthink it, left foot. Oh, got it. Oh, look at that, I can do that. It's, yeah, and I think too as well, if everyone has to understand that when you're new to something, whether it's bodybuilding, training, you know, changing your nutrition, posing, yeah. whatever it might be, in the beginning it does feel a little bit sticky and strange and, and your mm. brain's trying to tick over to try and figure this out. Yeah. And you've got to normalize that for yourself and realize like, it's like the part of any start of a journey, like a kid trying to stand or walk for the first time. You're going to get frustrated and yeah. fall over a thousand times. Yep. Don't give, give up or be angry or go, oh, I'm just naturally bad at this. Well, I mean, the only reason why anyone's naturally bad at anything is because I haven't done it enough. Yep. So, yeah. 100%. Yeah. All right, let's move on to the next question. Um, what do you believe, and on this note, I mean, we're kind of covering it, but... <laughs> What do you believe is the, the secret? I, I get this all the time. Like people saying like, you know, is there anything else I can do in prep to, to be ready to get leaner? Like, you know, to be the perfect package. Like, is there any supplement I can take? All this type of nonsense. <clears throat> but what do you think is the secret to making it through to a show in the best condition possible for your package? Mind flex. <laughs> mind flex. Yeah. The fitness of your mind. Yeah. yeah, yeah, mind flex. It is just so important. Like we just spoke mm. about it, but we'll speak about it again. It is the number one thing. It's mm. like you, you can make this thing as hard as you want to with your mind or you can make it as easy as you want to. You can convince yourself yeah, it's really yeah. bad. So, yeah, yeah. yeah, so trust the process, really important. Um, like, uh, you know, like it's a kilo a week or half a kilo a week, whatever it is. Add that up over time, okay? Mm. You can't be here back here. Mm. You've got to trust the process and eventually boom, you there. Yeah. Jono, perfect example. Yeah. Perfect example. Actually, at my gym, Haley, she hasn't competed because of damn stupid COVID back in the day and she was amazing. <gasps> Is right? this the one with the really broad back? Yes. Yeah, yeah she's yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually so, was messaging her yesterday. She's oh, lovely. Get out of town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. She's really <clears throat> So, um, she, if you looked at her right now and she said, what, do, what category? You look at her and go, I don't know. You got to mm. get lean, yeah. because when she gets lean, O M G! Oh I her. my goodness! Yeah, I just hope she makes a comeback, because that girl needs to get on stage. She's I agree. Amazing. She's what well, was one of those ones where I think <clears throat> everyone was watching her um, yeah. throughout her prep, but not in a way. She was very humble as well. Oh, and totally really sweet and, yeah. and kind with other people. She was only nineteen at the time too. Yeah, you're kidding. Imagine oh. though, she's been building for all this time. Like yeah. she's going to come back and just blow everybody away. Yeah, hope so. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so, so don't um, ever think that you're not good enough. Mm. You've just got to strip back. That's all it is. Yeah. It's just get the layers of fat off. You know? yeah. Hey, I've got five kilos I can take off right now. You've got a baby to take off. I have a baby, yes. Yeah, so I'm about 10 kilos. <laughs> You'll get rid of that just like that. Extra human but, in a week. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, just, just strip it off. And then as you strip it off, we might look at you and start going, oh, you're not bikini. Mm. Uh, you know, or you're not sports, you're not fitness. Mm. Um, and then we can change you then. Like uh, when, um, oh, gone blank on her name, Kate came in, Kate Archibald. Oh she, yeah, yeah, she went from bikini to figure. Oh, well, well she, yeah, and uh, the very first time I saw her, I just went, you're not sports fitness, you're going figure. Yeah. That was day one. And she goes, really? I said, yeah. I said to uh, Tiara, um, so she's uh, posing ne next class. And I said, yeah, you, you figure. She yeah. goes and wins a pro card. Yeah, yeah, she looked phenomenal. She oh, had amazing. amazing symmetry. Yep, yep, yeah, absolutely. So yeah, so don't, don't be worried about where you're gonna fit. Have an idea that, okay, you wanna do sports, I wanna do fitness, I wanna do that, that's fine. And as you're going along, if we start spotting something as you strip it down, we go, oh, actually, let's move you here. Mm. Or if you wanna stay here, it might be a case of, okay, get no leaner. Mm. Just ride it through. I've had ones go from bikini to fitness accidentally in a prep. Yeah, um, quite a few times. Yep. And it's mostly because I go, oh, your body likes likes losing body fat. Yep. And there's a lot of hard muscle underneath there that we didn't really account for. Boom. And then you can do the opposite as well and yep. think, oh, we cut back and <clears throat> there's probably just not enough there for yep. fitness. Yep. And sometimes as well, I think I had this recently with a competitor who said, um, she's really disheartened. And I said, oh, we're kind of stuck between bikini and fitness. You know, just we're a little bit kind of in between. I think you're probably more fitness though than bikini. But And she was just, you know, oh, I feel like I'm not good enough for fitness. The interesting thing though is I think that we can develop our physiques over time. And we don't necessarily think that much about the girls that have been training for six or seven years, that have been developing that nice mature physique. Yep. If you are stuck there, do a show, you know, get your feedback, come back, grow, and then go again and be a little bit more fitness. Yep. 100%. Don't be don't be sad that you're 
you know, above or below a category, it doesn't mean that you're not good enough. No, yeah. not at all. You know, this, the, the one thing, the, the only thing you can control is putting the best version of you on stage. Yeah. That's all you've got to do. Okay, where you then place is a bonus. Okay, but by, by having the, the goal of putting the best version on stage, you win. Mm. If, you put the, the, if you put the pressure of yourself to win, mm. you come second, you're a loser. Because mm. you didn't win. Mm. Don't put that pressure on yourself. Put the pressure on yourself, but just putting the best version of you on stage. Yeah. That's winning. Love that. Yeah. The improvements. Yeah. Yeah. And there's no supplement. There's no single, a magical supplement that's going to make you look better than effort and mindset that would get you on stage. There's no sort of... No, not mindset was, no. No, 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 no. no, no. no. Yeah. That's, that's probably the biggest thing yeah. to tell them. Yeah. It's like, no, it's yeah. just hard work. Okay, hey, if we go to the other side, the dark side, even those people drop off and they're using something that... Uh, oh, you mean the yeah. really magical yeah, stuff? The really yeah, magical yeah, stuff. yeah. But what I'm saying is that doesn't change their mindset. No. Yeah. Oh, even then as well, like, there are people that I've known of that have done that stuff and that haven't actually looked that good, you know, because they haven't put the work in, yeah. you know. They might be, you know, on the topic of PEDs, they might be using PEDs and not training hard enough or mm. not eating very well and assuming that this thing is this, you know, uh, it's just going to change yeah. everything, it's going to yeah. transform everything. And it's yeah. unfortunately, well, actually, no, fortunately, you have to put hard work in. Don't be, uh, don't avoid hard work is what I would say. Yeah, I think people look at hard work as if it's bad, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't want to do that. No, I love hard work. It's I good, love isn't it? Smashing isn't out. it nice? I've been training for forty years. Wow! Wow! Right. Wow! Yeah. Forty years I've been in what? gym as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you bored yet? No, no. no. I got the fifty sevens up the other week. Oh, we have yeah, been talking that? about this. Yeah. Oh, oh right. Yeah, yeah. Because you were and like, I really struggle with with some of my my, my bench or whatever, or the the um, mm. chest press. Yeah. Mm. And you were like, but I'm really strong. Yeah. But I'm you know like plateaued. But you so you keep you've like increased in strength. Yeah, increased strength. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Still so. after. 40 years. Yep, still have 40 years. And, and I, I train as hard after 40 years as I did when I was back 12. Yeah, I would believe that. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. wicked. You just, so any youngies out there, it doesn't start and stop today or tomorrow. You yeah. just keep going. Yeah, it's a lifestyle. It's yep. a continual thing. People mm. always think that you know, they're going to be done when they've finished the 8 weeks or the 12 weeks or the 20 weeks. And that's where they go wrong. Yep. Is they just see it as a chapter, not, a, not an actual series mm. of books. Yep, yeah. that's it. Nice. All right, so... Mindset, there you go, you've heard it here. I knew what the answer was before I asked that question. I, I just was baiting you. <laughs> <laughs> um, if competitors are worried about being ready in time, mm -hmm. we did kind of touch on this before, would you recommend deferring to the next season? Um, it depends on their journey. Okay. Yeah, so, so for, for some, um, the one thing I've never, I, I learned this way back 15, 17 years ago when I first started, was some people just wanted to get on stage to tick yeah. a box. Yeah. They knew they weren't going to be totally ready, mm. but it was one of their goals. Bucket list. So it's up to you. It's, it's, it's whatever your journey is. Um, it's not for me to say you're not ready. It's like, you I'm definitely not ready. No, yeah. you're not. <laughs> well, for the pre we're in a premium <laughs> division and you're ready. Then we know. <laughs> But yeah, it's, it's your journey. You jump on if you feel you're ready. Yeah. Um, if, we can, if you want to ask us, am I ready? Mm -hmm. we'll, I'll let you know to say, well, this is where you're at. Be honest. Yeah, Be yeah. honest. But if yeah. not, it's your journey. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and generally speaking, everyone gets to fit into somewhere. Whether yeah. it's a transformation category, where it's just... Some, some just do angels and, um, angels and uh, runway. Mm -hmm. Because one, they're not ready. And two, they want to do a show. Yeah. They love it. Yeah. yeah. I've heard girls just do, just do wings. Some of them as well, they'll do, like, I've had clients do runway and wings <clears throat> and actually do really well in those categories because the costume is particularly flattering on their physique. Like, it just, they look beautiful in a runway dress. Mm. And then you put them in a bikini and you're like, nah, not quite that category yet. Mm. But then you put them in a dress and you're like, oh, no, that's lovely. Like, yep. I think that's why they exist. Those categories yeah, exist. Yep. Yeah. And look, also, if you're doing <clears throat> two or three shows... And say you do the Sunshine Coast on May um, May fifth, right? Mm -hmm. Is it you might then just not be ready? But what do you do? Is you get stage experience, mm. and man, seriously, that is so important. Mm. Stage experience you just can't get other than on stage. You get those um, stressful nerves yeah, out as well. Yeah. And then you've got two weeks to do, make a whole heap of changes. Yeah. Um, and that's a heap of time to make a lot of changes. Um, but one of the biggest ones is actually stage awareness and stage mm. presence. Like I had one girl at the Sunshine Coast last year. Looking at the photos, I look back and just go, you should have actually, you probably could have won. Mm. But the way she presented herself on stage, she just, you know, instead of being here, maybe she was here. Mm. And it was just like, oh man, if I could have just done this, mm. I reckon we're going to make you pop. Mm. Just miss that little bit of pop. 
It's the final package that's put yep. together, not just with what the physique looks like, but the way you present the yep. physique as well. Yeah, like um, bikini colour. Yeah. Swimsuit colour. We had a girl one year, the colour of her swimsuit was so close to the colour of her tan. She looked naked. Yeah, pretty much. Oh dear. Just, just did, nothing popped. It was like, <laughs> where's your body parts? <laughs> I've just got a blank oh, canvas no. here. Yeah, so you're, the colour of your bikini girls, remember that don't put it up on your white skin, mm. put it up against a brown skin. That's right. A dark brown skin and go, will that pop off that? I'd be surprised yeah. some of those like really nice like whites and, you know, um, even had one girl one year, I think maybe Onika, like the little short one. Yeah, yeah. Really dark skin, like yep. we're, you know, talking dark. She didn't mm. even tan, she just had gloss. Yep, yep. Um, yellow, like bright yellow. Yes. Her bikini looked yep. so nice. Yeah. But then like, it's interesting, like she had that opportunity to be able to go, yep, that's what my skin's going to look like on the day. Yep. Awesome. I'm pale as anything. Mm. So I always pick um, very like pale colors, like really pale, not skin color, but no, like no. white or like yep. something that's, even silver is a really good one as well because I know that with a nice dark tan, it's going to stand out. Yep. So you don't want brown because brown will be. Got to watch your browns close. and your reds. Yeah, yeah like if it's yep, maroon, yep. sometimes it yep. can be a little bit yep. funny. So girls, that's a big one, and also where you wear it, girls. Like you can bring them up too high, mm. makes your legs too long, and your if you're section yeah, yeah, yeah. too small. Um, and again, you go too low, and guys in particular, guys, stop wearing your shorts and your trunks so low. It just elongates your midsection and it just throws out your symmetry. Makes them look really square through the waist if they were. Yeah, well, you can also get hourglass. They come oh, in yep. and then they go out and then the shorts come in. Yeah, so you right. get this hourglass shape. So yeah, yeah I, I can destroy the best body um, by changing the hair wrong, the makeup wrong, mm. um, wearing the, uh, the, the the outfit in the wrong way, yeah. um, changing the symmetry, getting them to pose, probably a little bit sh stupid. And said, so, well, it's easy done. I've seen sometimes as well with the girls that, um, some of them will, for example, they'll wear their like sports pants or their bikini and they'll chop their bum off. Like it's, it's almost like they've got like a double bum. Yep. And so it's like, hold on, your glutes are quite long. You know, maybe we'll just like this edge, it not too high, but like maybe mm. not give yourself muffin tops, yep. you know, because you don't have muffin tops. No. You're just cutting yourself in yep. half on your butt and you need to probably just edge it up yep. a little bit but yep. if you've got long glutes naturally that might not be such a good idea because then it's too much it's that's too right long. and there was a girl last year who had um, <laughs> the way the bikini was actually it was the way the bikini was made mm. and it just elongated the glutes it was like oh my god your glutes is long it didn't look like yep. she had that nice fullness it yep. kind of looked like she was missing some yep. maybe yeah yeah so yeah yep. so positioning yep. of your positioning costumes. of your costumes guys and girls crucial and make yep. sure that you everything is in as yep. well that's a that's a big thing. There's yeah. been some, you know what really is, I find, found really lovely at your shows or any, any in general, but always your shows is that if a girl's bikini nightmare ever breaks. It does happen. And it you know, pops. But I've never to this day, touch wood, seen anything because I think I'm too focused on everyone. I don't yeah. know. But um, if it pops, you guys are really lovely. You're like, well, we'll put it in the next division or like, is she good? Like, can she do it back up again yeah. and come back yeah. on? Yeah. You, you aren't that brutal, oh, you know, you're oh, out no. now type no. of thing, like no, you had no, a wardrobe no. malfunction. No. Yeah. And look, if you happen to miss a division, and please don't try not to, is that if we can put you another one, we will. Yeah, okay? um, we've had that. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. But just also just on that, actually, girls, say your time slots 11 o'clock, the times are always an approximate. Mm. And if at 11 o'clock, you say we're, we're bang on, right? That's 11 o'clock. You need to be back here at side of stage at 10 to 11. Yeah. We're going to get you in the pump up room at 20 to 11, and they're probably going to do a first call for you at 10 30. Yeah. Okay. So just be, remember, you're not ready for 11 o'clock. You're ready for half hour before. I always At least get my half girls hour an hour before their first Beautiful. stage time. I want them in their heels with their bikini yep. on, with their jewelry on. I don't want them fluffing around and stuffing Beautiful. around met, taking yep. selfies. Yeah. Cause I also want them to be able to center themselves before they start pump <clears> up. <throat> we can decide if they need a little bit more food or water or whatever, yep. as opposed to kind of, you don't want to be rushing around on show day. You no, don't want to be going, no. Oh, yeah. So. And also put your number on early. Yes, our, yeah. you know, like uh, our so backstage is. runners won't know Mariah per se, yeah. but they go 34. We need 34. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Then they can identify you. Yeah. And also, sorry, just that. Um, go to the runners and say, hey, I'm Mariah. I'm Jason. Um, mm. I'm here. I'm in these divisions. Great. Mm. Know where you are. Yeah. yeah. They're really lovely. Was yeah. it Rory? Got Rory, Ken, nice. um, and a few floaters. Yeah. We Rory a, and Ken, the main We ones. have an ongoing battle, me and Rory. We just <laughs> pretend to hate each other, and everyone thinks we actually do. <laughs> And we had pretend fights. Yeah, I think nice. I was pregnant the last show and I was having like a pretend fight with him. And I, I swear people thought that he was going to beat up a pregnant lady. <laughs> <laughs> He's so funny though. Like if you ever want to feel, get rid of your nerves and stuff, 
there are so many people backstage, coaches, yeah. helpers, who um, kind of take the edge off a little bit. Like we're not, 100%. I'm never uptight on show day. I'm yeah. always really happy and, yeah. cause we're prepared, everything's done. Yeah. You don't have to freak out. You don't have to flap around. You don't have to, you know, girls go from being in tears to being on stage and just going, wow, this is so fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a roller coaster, it's the yeah. best. Um, all right, so next question. Um, obviously, so de- <laughs> deferring, it's fine. You can defer, you know. We can. Oh, yeah, so, sorry. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, and, and this year in particular, if you miss season A for some reason, yeah. um, just, you've already you've got the All Female Classic. Just keep going. And then if you happen to go for the All Female Classic and just miss that, well, you've got season B. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing you've got a problem with is if you're going season B only and you miss that, you've got to wait till next year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you've got to go through <clears throat> Christmas again, but, you know, it is yeah. what it is, <laughs> so to speak. Um, no, that's great. I love that because yeah, the seasons they're not stopping anytime soon. So, no. is competing a family friendly? I've asked this before, but I kind of want to yeah. expand again. Is competing a family friendly endeavour, or do you believe it can be? It can be in the right circumstances for say mums, dads, you know, people with partners. I get this a lot where people come to me like mums, and they'll be like, "Oh, but I've got kids." Oh, you know, dads will be like, "Oh, but you know, my wife, she's not really into bodybuilding." Like. So let's talk about how can we manage this with lifestyle? Is it possible to do it and still juggle everything else? I think it is because I've done it. Yeah. And didn't have a problem any time. Yeah. It, it's a case of like, I suppose if your partner's going, just eat the ice cream every night. Mm. No, I don't want to. The pressure. The pressure. Mm. Like I had, um, we had uh, Angie's family over last Monday because um, they'd all been away for Christmas. Mm-hmm. And I only wanted to eat this and this. Mm-hmm. They were eating that, 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 that. This person ate that, that, that. And everyone's eating something different. So it's just the way you look at it mm. and just go, yeah, look, he's complete. He just wants that. That's all. I you think know? that a lot of people attach too much emotion to food and social occasions yep. and also feel pressured to eat what everyone else is eating. Yep. And I always challenge it. I always say things like, does it hurt you for me to eat something Brilliant. different to you today? Brilliant. Does it hurt you? You mm. know, And especially if somebody says to you at a family event, Oh, you know, you're bringing your own food. Like, why can't you just be normal like everybody else? Yeah. And, and then, you know, I did say to somebody the other day, I, it's a bit rude, but I, because I don't want to look like you. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not what you should say to your family. But it's almost as just as confrontational but, as someone's doing that to you in reverse. Yeah. But you know what? Just on that point, if, if you did say that, you say, I don't want to look like you. And you, you want, if you're not feeling the best, can I help you? Yeah. Because yeah. the thing is, I don't know, some people are overweight and they love being overweight. And oh, that's, yeah. your, that, and that's yeah. your choice. That's their choice. Yeah. It's a very yeah. logical answer too. Like, I don't want to look... Because what we are is what we eat, right? Like, yeah. we end up that way. Mm. And I would, honestly, I was joking. I would never say that to somebody. But no. it's because it grinds my gears when someone does that. And I think that it's, it's such an invasive thing to go, oh, why are you eating that? Or, yeah. you know, why are you behaving like... Why are you going for a walk? And it's like, because I don't want to die early. I want to... Yeah. I feel good when I do it. Why do I have to justify myself to you? Yeah. And what you eat, what goes in your mouth has sweet F.A. all, you know, to do with what other people yep. are eating. It's yep. They don't allow people to influence you with your mm-hmm. food um, because it's just social pressure and it makes them feel better about themselves, yep. mostly. It's like the, um, I used to work in some offices where there was a birthday every week. Yeah, and it's cake. Like, I'm sorry, I just don't want the cake. Yeah. Are you going to have cake? Why do I have to have cake? Does that make you feel better? Yeah, that's, that's, that's exactly yeah. the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay, I'll take a piece. Go on. People don't there end up asking me anymore because I'm so rude. and yeah. so. <laughs> honestly, I'm so blunt with people that they go, oh, like, oh, God, that's confronting. And I'm yeah. like, well, you were very confronting towards me. Let's go, you know. But. And I'm, I'm lucky when I'm not a cake person, right? But I haven't had cake in years and years. Mm. Anyway, we had um, our grandson's birthdays and we had to have them on the same day because we, we missed them. And um, anyway, I decided, you two know cakes? what? There was two cakes. There was two cakes. I said, you know what? I'm actually going to have a slice. Nice. It was really yummy. Yeah. <laughs> but, when they're made professionally, the cake tastes good. Oh, man, this is just to, to, to die. I must admit, it was to die for, but I'm such not a Don't cake person. Much. I haven't had that, that piece since. No. It just, you know, luckily, that's for me. You know, mm. It's like coffee. I haven't had a coffee ever. What? Yeah. I've never had coffee. I've had a coffee I'm once. discovering so many new things about you. Every time I do an interview, I can't even handle the smell. Really? 
Cannabis. Even iced coffee. Can't even handle the smell of iced no coffee. No caffeine at all? Do you do pre-workout? I, I give me a pre-workout. If I, do a pre- okay. if I do a pre-workout, I just do a natural one. Nice. I won't have anything with chemicals in it. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Wow. Yeah. That's so, crazy. And I rarely do a pre-workout. Like, I'll go years without a pre-workout. Uh, then I'll run one for a few months and then I'll run out and go, oh, whatever. I would be afraid to see what would happen if I gave you caffeine. Then, like, <laughs> you've got <laughs> so much energy. <laughs> Imagine you I've and caffeine. I've been banned from pre-workouts. Yeah, so. I was going to say, I'm like, that you would double. There'd be two yeah. of you running around. Uh, yeah, that'd be crazy. <laughs> the world doesn't need that. <laughs> well, that's, um, yeah, look, and it is honestly one of those things where, you know, it is something that you can fit into your lifestyle. As you said before, it's a decision. We need to choose whether or not, you know, we're above whatever's happening and we just yeah. get on with our lives. Yeah. Normalize it, take your food with you, be solutions focused, take an esky, you know. It's not actually that hard. When you think about it, a full day's worth of food, yeah. especially when you're dieting, it's not like you're carrying around your kitchen sink and fridge. No. And if you don't make a big deal of it in front of people and you just whip out your thing, or you say, hey, mate, you know, I can come to dinner, but I'm not going to eat. I might yeah. have some soda water or whatever. Or You don't have to exclude yourself from no. everything. You can make things work. But I'm also a hermit, and I don't really like being very social. Yeah. So it, prep is great because it's an excuse for me not to go to social events that I don't want to go to. Fantastic. <laughs> but you know, if you do need to go to one, like say, say you're in the sports club and everyone's going to the sports club. Mm. Go, okay, look, the sports club's going to have something pretty close to what you can eat. And, and, and like, edge. if it's just a few grams either side, it's not the end of the world. It's not the end of prep. Mm. You know, all of a sudden, like, they've got a 300-gram rump, rump on there, and you want a, a 180. Do you know what? The extra 120, either make whatever, leave cut it in behind, half or, cut it yeah. or just go, you know what? I'm going to have less next meal. Okay? Yeah. So you don't have to look like someone goes, oh, look, he's doing that again. She's doing that again. Especially if it's yeah. for a really special occasion. Like, I think yeah. certainly for things like your own birthday or you know, stuff like that, your anniversary, if that, you know, it's inevitably going to fall in prep at some mm. point. Have a chat to your coach. That's a big thing too. Yeah. Like a lot of my clients won't talk to me, will go to an event, completely, like completely destroy their food and go, oh shit. Instead of just going, hey coach, it's my birthday in a couple of weeks. Um, I had one recently who's doing bikini. I got, you know, I got a dinner coming up for my birthday. I'm 40, you know, like a yep. big one. And I was like, oh, you're in great nick. Like we're going to be ready in time. Yeah, I trust you. Like, have a flexible meal, yep. and yeah, she came away, and she was during a diet break anyway, and we're back to dropping again, and everything's great. Yep. And she didn't go up, and it was like, I think there's certain personality types though that you give them a free meal, and they just yeah. yeah, they go cray cray. Well, yeah, you know, I've been running diets out for 20 years, right? And I have this sheet. Back in the day, I'd always do six meals, right? Yeah. Um, now I'm like, what? How do you want to eat? Do you want one meal a day yeah, or six meals a day? That's okay, good, it's up yeah. to you. Up to your lifestyle. Because for some people, you can't fit six in because you just don't have the time. Mm. But you've got time for, say, two or three, right? Mm. Whatever it is. But go back to the day where there was 42 meals in a week. Mm. And the very first meal of Monday morning, you stuff up. Big deal. Mm. You've got 41 more. I know. Yeah. It's not like you've burnt the, the whole thing. Of, it's yeah. not the end of the world. You yeah. miss one training session. Not the end of the world. You don't need yeah. to write off an entire yep. day, an entire yep. week, or an entire month based on one split yep. decision at the moment. Don't yep. do it. Even a whole day, a weekend, or whatever it is, you can come back. Yeah, yeah. It's not an issue. Don't do it all the time, though. Yep. No, that's right. It's like reduce <laughs> it's just, the frequency. It's, it's just for some reason, if it just went haywire, just for some strange reason, just jump back on the horse and off we go. Forgive yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Love that. Okay, so um, how much of an influence do you believe your circle has on your comp prep journey? How important are the five people you spend the most time with? It can be important and it can't be. Mm -hmm. It's a yes and no. Reason being is that for some people, their mind is so strong. They're autonomous. It just does not matter what's yeah. around them. They can have the five worst people That's around me. them. <laughs> yep. And it doesn't matter. They're mm. just boom. Mm. And then for others, absolutely helpful. Mm. So most importantly, do what's right for you. And if mm -hmm. it means getting a more like-minded people around you, Jump with those like-minded mm -hmm. people. Invite more of those those top five in. Make some prep friends. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And when you come to the um, the classes, you be do. sitting, be sitting there and just say, "Oh, hi, I'm Jason. Oh, I'm Mariah. Nice to meet you." Boom. Yeah, yeah. Look with names too. I, I know how you do it, but <laughs> but also I would still be terrible at remembering people's names. It's like, not easy. No. No. And especially if they look similar too, then you're oh, screwed. Oh, and then they change the hair color, Ooh. or change their hair up, hair down. You go, <laughs> oh, the face. <laughs> Ooh, it's on the tip of my tongue. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think certainly I would agree with you there. Like I, I think when I, when I competed the first time, I had a very awful person in my life, and weirdly enough, it actually 
fueled yes. my fire yes. to push harder. Yep. And now I'm really happy and comfortable in my relationship. I'm kind of like, eh, <laughs> you know, but it's really interesting because you, hit, you read all the time, you know, the five people you spend the time with. I think it's also more so about the fact that if five of your friends are really negative people yep. who are constantly getting in your ear about why you're doing this, why you're doing that, and you're not having a nice experience with them and they're making life really hard for you, um, I think in that instance, it's like, well, you already have the answer. Yeah. You know, do you want to be around them all the time? Mm. Probably not. Is it okay to take a step back? Probably, yeah. but not advice we can give, but I guess it's kind of a no brainer is that, yeah. yeah, surround yourself with the best. Yeah, absolutely. Try to, mm. yeah. yeah, cool. Um, <clears throat> do you believe tracking macros and following a meal plan vice versa is toxic and harmful? or beneficial or is it a matter of perspective and purpose like where they fit in what's that that mean obsession is what the lazy people call the dedicated or mm. something like that so you know, or dedication is what the lazy people call obsession yes yeah, but even that, obsession isn't that bad it's not it's no. not so so you're obsessed with looking good feeling mm. healthy feeling fit mm. how dare you be obsessed with that mm. it's like um, what's the question again <laughs> Oh, Just, yeah, the, the um, tracking macros. Oh, tracking macros. Plan, yeah. So, so, yeah, so, like, look at the shirt you're wearing right now. Was that, like, a plan put in place? Was that reviewed afterwards? Or did they just, like, haphazardly put that shirt together? I don't and, know. I think they printed it for me. Yeah, yeah. but I think that there was, there was, there was a purpose put in that step shirt. Step-by-step process. It was step-by-step. Yeah. Step. Mm. The one thing we don't do as humans is step-by-step step ourselves. Oh, what yeah. What goes into us. And that's only proof you're only going to go outside. Mm. Um, and just go, go the beach, go the, mm. the local um, shopping centre. Mm. We're just obese, we're over, mm. overweight because we're not taking care of us. There's no thought. Put no thought. So yes. put some thought in and don't feel guilty about it or don't feel like, oh, I can't let them know I've just counted my macros. Mm. Ah, stuff it. Count your damn macros. Yeah. Look after yourself. If people ask you what you're doing when you're putting your macros into yeah. my fitness pal and putting my food into my diary, yeah. oh, that must, be, that must be inconvenient or frustrating. It's not. <laughs> How many things do you do in your day and day life, in your work, where you actually have to track things? Yeah. You have yeah. to track you have to track things. Mm-hmm. I had my shop, I had to track sales, I had to track revenue, I had to track expenses. Mm-hmm. To track things. It's and- weird how people think nutrition is something that, you know, um, can only be done on the fly and they want it to be easy and it has to be convenient and you know, I, I don't want to have to think about my nutrition. And I'm like, you have to think about what time you leave the house to go to work, right? Yep. You know, otherwise you're late and then you get fired if you do that numerous times. Yep. There are obviously guidelines and structures to everything that we do in life in order to succeed. Yep. So why would we not apply those same principles to food? We just don't. Yeah. And it's because we don't. The, the whole of global yeah. is in the obesity epi- epi- epidemic. Mm. Not every country because some countries where they just don't eat that you know mm. the, the majority we're over, overweight and obese mm. but track it track 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 it's mm. like um your training track your training yeah you know the number of other uh, back gosh she's a decade ago when i had my studio this girl came in and said look i hate weight training i said i don't know why she was mm. what do you mean you know why i said because what did you do last week she just said um for, for bicep curls she goes i did three sets of 10 on five kilos i said that's a problem mm. so what's the problem i said I'm not challenging yourself. you can already do it so mm. i said come on down here so grab the eights and she goes no wait i said just grab the eights and she goes mm. Oh, wow. Mm. I never thought they could do that. Mm. Yeah, so once you can do something, track it. I've done that. What's it? There's a percentage of 45 or 48%, something like that, of people are more likely to achieve something if they write it down, right? If it's documented. Beautiful. Right? And so I did a podcast on New Year's Eve resolutions and sticking to them. And the single biggest mistake that happens from having a dream or wanting to do something and having the intent... We all have intent, don't we? We all have these like yeah. awesome things we want to do, renovate the house and set this up and whatever. It doesn't matter what goal it is. But so many people go, I want to do this. And then there's just nothing. There's just silence. There's no, like, we've got notes here. We've got notes here. You can see all my, I've got my whole life here all on, in yep. notes that you can see. And, you know, if you go around in life and think, I'm just going to remember to eat well today. I'm just going to remember. I'm just going to remember to eat well tomorrow when the shit hits the fan with the kids or I'm just going to miraculously remember that doctor's appointment on Friday. We can't operate that way. So, yeah, I, I like that the tracking and meal planning. Yeah, do it. It's the way you see it, isn't yep, it? absolutely. If you see it as a cage, it's going to be a cage. Yep. If you see it as, 
hold on, I've got a, I've got a really good grip on my life. Like mm. I, I've got control of this. It can be a really positive thing. Yep, absolutely. And like, like, like actually, just in saying that, I use the scales. I'll do on the scales every morning, and I, I don't beat myself up. I'll look at them and just go, "Well, what you ate yesterday is a result <laughs> of that." <laughs> Accountability yeah, yeah, reflection. Accountability. Yeah, yeah. And I never get uh, like if I get disappointed what's on the scales, mm. it's at my own fault mm. because I know what I did the day before and the day before that added added up to that. Yeah. Yeah. And if it goes down, fantastic. I know because what I did yesterday and the day before gave me that result. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's not permanent. That's another not. thing too. People panic oh, about weight absolutely. fluctuations. It's like yeah. this idea that they think that once they've gained fat or glycogen, you know, like heaps of carbs, a bit of glycogen and water, a bit of inflammation, you know, oh, I'm stuffed. What do you, why do you think this is permanent? Why do you think that this is not going to go away once you Great. go back? Love you know, it. Should I cut my calories really low and do a marathon? No. <laughs> just just reflect and a lot of it is coming down from that big emotional yep. swing that I think we have when we're triggered by something mm. that was huge from eating disorder recovery was yep. it's not permanent the fat gain you know the, the baby in the belly it's, it's going to be out in 10 weeks or 11 yes. weeks you don't have to crash and burn with mm. something because it's made you feel like you've you know I don't know you're not where you want to be yet yep. yeah and just to that point as well you're right there's 20 weeks, say so you do 20 weeks prep or 12 weeks prep, mm. is that you want to be here at the 20 week mark, but you mm. can't. Just let the process happen yeah. bit by bit, Patience. bit by bit, bit by bit. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Just put a little bit to work in because yep. it's not those grandiose efforts, is it? No. And you, whatever kilos you're overweight by, that's for stage weight, mm. you didn't get there over, overnight. Mm. That was like yeah, you can. months and months and months and years of just mm. slowly putting some weight on. That's okay. Mm. We're going to take it off. Mm. Don't beat yourself up. Mm. Yep. You'll get yep. there. Love it. So, um, are there any ways, final question, and then we're going to jump into some fun questions. Are there any ways we can look to, this is a serious question. I don't keep many of these in, Ooh, in the podcast, but okay. are there any ways we can look to prevent or catch, catch, catch them, PED? Oh. And for those who don't understand what PED is, because you probably hear it a lot, it's just literally use of things like steroids or illicit substances. So things that are banned in natural federations, yep. the use of them. Is there any way we can look to prevent them or catch them? You know, these using athletes competing in natural shows, aside from, because we already have the urine tests on the day, yes. which you've been very studious with. The last show, um, I think one of my girls got tested and yep. it was random and I was like, woohoo! <laughs> like, I was, you know, she, she wasn't super, super jacked, but I was like, I'm so excited for her to go through this yep. you know, yep. experience. Do we have anything else? What else can we do? Uh, look, um, it's hard. Urine testing is so expensive as it is. Yeah. Um, then there's uh, bloods, um, oh, yeah. hair follicle, um, yeah. and uh, lie detector. Mm -hmm. Now, the lie detector is just so easy to beat, mm -hmm. um, and we just, it's just a waste of time. It's also so easy for it to go the other way, too, for a person to be super nervous and then to get like a false positive. Yeah, that can happen as well. Or a false um, negative. But a true lie detector test takes three hours. You're kidding. Yeah. So there's um, federation in the past that have done just for 30 minutes. Um, even less. It's like that's not a test. Yeah. That's just absolutely beatable, right? Mm. So um, the, the the best still is, is urine. Look, we did um last year across Australia maybe three four hundred tests. I noticed at the show, the state show, that you had someone pretty much in there constantly. Like it was just this like yep. flow of yeah. And yeah. well, the Australian show, Wayne McDonald, our mm. um, our founder, um, is at the Australian show in Brisbane last year. He would have done. He tested all day. Mm -hmm. Two days non-stop. But here's mm -hmm. the crazy thing. Mm -hmm. Someone actually challenged me the other day and goes, you don't test. <laughs> like, what, because you didn't see it? Yeah. That's I did. See, I honestly yeah. admittedly did <clears throat> see it. Um, Every show. And, Every and show. Because obviously we're busy. We're kind of running around mm. and stuff like that. But I think like even the, the last show I noticed that it was like, it wasn't, because usually as well, people you can pick on where you're like, you look way too good. You know, like let's, let's test you or a winner, for example. But this was like, I'm pretty sure my girl got tested and she got a fifth. Like I was like, that's yep. good because then it's like, it's still fair because imagine if she got the fifth and someone else didn't, mm. she's still taking a place yep. from someone else if she'd been caught using. Um, you know, there is the possibility, we've seen some feds, for example, like test mid-season or the hard part of that is people go, you know, you should test in off-season and you should test um, in the six to eight weeks leading up to a show and how do you force people to take a urine test at 10 weeks out when you don't know whether they're going to compete with you, you know, how do we do that? We well, that's exactly right. We, we can, once you remember, yep. we can then do oh, it. Oh, you can test once you, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah, once you remember. But you're you also can't intent. enforce making them become a member, like, early either. It's well, just... exactly right. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, uh, but, you know, for the most part, for all the tests we do, 
pretty much all 99% come back negative. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, do you do a name and shame? Is that a thing? Uh, yes. Ah, yes. Okay. That does go up on the website. It just has to. Yeah. Do you get pictures yeah. of them too? Uh, no. Ah. No, just a name. <laughs> just a name. Just draw yeah. funny faces on them. Yeah. <laughs> little, little pokey And, and look, at the end of the, the day, look, there's another federation to compete in if you want to use stuff. Yeah, exactly. It's simple as that. And you know what? For the most part, those people that do take, take this something do do that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And um, the ones that come into ours and do it, why? Mm. You've got the other federation. What's the time that, um, the? because I know there's a time span of, for example, someone who might have done a cycle 10 years ago or something like that. Five. It's five. Yep. Okay. Yep, yep. Just to clarify, especially with ICN, it's five, five years. Five yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, and also, just watch in the last seven days that mm -hmm. if you're taking any pre-workouts oh, pre or supplements, yeah. stop. Because there's some pre-workouts, the, the, the chemical is only illegal mm -hmm. on game day. Oxy Shred had something in it, I think, yeah, for yeah. a while. A few yeah. of the pre-workouts have got that. So it's yeah. only on the day. You take the day before, totally fine. Mm -hmm. Problem is, if it's still in your system mm. the next day. Mm. So three to seven days out, just stop all subs. Mm -hmm. Okay, because you really don't know sometimes what they actually put in them. Well, and especially now, too, is because it's not just testing winners, it's randoms. It's like we all need yeah. to be very studious yeah. with yeah. this. And the number of girls, um, and I know someone personally, who got done for a pre-workout, um, mm. on the day it just ruined your reputation yeah. and all it was was a pre-workout that the day before mm. was okay mm. yep. yeah yeah I think it sometimes mirrors like crack cocaine or something like that uh, it's more so also um, can be seen as a, uh, a fat loss something. okay so yeah. you, you burn more fat on the day yeah right yeah 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 so just it's no not worth sense. it because even it. like honestly the difference that a pre-workout makes or a diuretic or whatever on the day is so minimal like yeah. it's so minimal that you wouldn't you wouldn't bother you just don't bother. If you are not ready, you obviously have not put in enough work or for long enough yep. to be able to be ready. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's really good to know because honestly, you know, I'm the middleman, the coach. You got, you kind of got like the competitors, the coaches, and then you got the federation, right? So it's kind of like this triangle and mm. judging and everything. Mm. <clears throat> and we often have to translate what happens on show day and why and, you know, how easy things are for particular people to do things and... There's all there's a lot of different sides to every single experience of competing and, and especially as natural competitors. I actually think it's harder to compete naturally and also harder to run a, f a federation naturally because you have to be so studious with this stuff, you know, and so do the competitors. So it's like, you know, for those who compete in non-natty feds and they do use, it's like they rock up in the day and they could be full of all sorts of things and it's like, you know, licorice all sorts. <laughs> but, um, and we saw with the, the, you know, as a little bit of word of warning before we get to the, the simple things, I know you've got some notes too. Oh, no, the death um, that occurred overseas with that federation, I won't mention any, any names of federations, but yeah. there was a death um, that occurred recently that was, uh, went under the radar and then there was a change of federation name as a result. <laughs> so it goes to show though that despite the temptation, yeah. There's always that yeah. really high risk Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So now, would you like to, have you got the no, mirror? I no, make, I, well, actually, yeah, I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, but yeah, just the mirror. Oh, the so, mirror with posing. Yeah, yeah, with posing. If there's one investment you make is a 30 to $40 mirror from Kmart. Mm -hmm. um, the one I use normally is a 160 centimeter by 40. It's a uh, metal surrounds, but apparently $40. Um, but there's apparently the $30 one with a plastic surround. Oh. It's the best investment you get for posing, nice. especially for your rear pose. Okay. Okay, because if you can't see your rear pose and you're doing this, mm -hmm. you're going to be programming. Oh, yeah, I've got this, I've got this, where we actually want you here. Always pose yeah, with a double so, mirror. Yeah, always pose with a double mirror. And that double mirror, you literally put just there, line yourself with the mirror behind you, and try and have the light source coming towards you. Oh, sorry, it would be that way, coming towards you, not mm -hmm. down lights. Down lights, you actually have to lean forwards, mm -hmm. trying to get a light source from the 45 degree. You keep moving yeah. around until you find the spot that works yeah. for you, because it's yeah. different, natural light and everything yeah. changes but it. Get a mirror. All right, quickly before we finish up, just because we always do this every podcast, and <laughs> you don't even know these either. I don't know these. Did you? I, you didn't sneak them I didn't see. I can't. I don't put glasses on. <laughs> admittedly, I do not give Jason these these questions beforehand because I like to put him put him on the edge, put him okay. on the spot. <clears throat> All right. So this is a this or that. Okay. So you just got to just got to pick one or the other, and this kind of okay, gives us okay. an idea of how you tick in your mind. Okay. okay. Um, it doesn't really. It's <laughs> pizza or pasta? Pizza. Pizza, okay. Monopoly or chess? Monopoly. Ooh, that's interesting. Entrepreneurial. Summer or winter? Summer. Nice. Did I say that quick enough? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Never winter, ever. He feels the cold. Detest the cold. <laughs> bigger biceps or bigger legs? Biceps. 
Nice. Uh, music, classical or metal? Metal. No way, really. There you go. A million dollars cash or your dream home built for you? Because your dream home could be like six million. Like he's just, Well, there's a good point. Well, so actually, no. The, the, the biggest, yeah, the biggest yeah. house in the world, I don't know whether it's that yeah. expensive. Well, then in that case, I might get a dream home. You're getting the dream home? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I would have gone the dream home too because it's just so much yeah. effort. Yeah. It's so much effort. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I made this one up and I don't even know why. Hands the size of your feet <laughs> or ears the size of your hands? Well, the white word says I've got two big ears anyway, so <laughs> hands the size of my feet, I suppose. Yeah, that's the obvious one, isn't it? <laughs> If someone had really small hands, I think they would go for the... Big, big or hands. maybe they want to hear better. I don't yeah. know. Hands the size of your feet. That's... Yeah, no, you haven't got massive feet. Oh, no, they're, no. they're yeah, reasonably sized. You just grab big These things. These big paddles. <laughs> That's what you want to do. Yeah. World champion swimmer. That, you know what? We could yeah. work with that. Sunrise or sunset? Sunrise. Nice. You're an early riser. Yeah. I like sunrise, but I would never be up for it. That's my favourite, but I wouldn't get up for it. City or country? Country. Nice. Spa or pool? Ooh. Depends on the mood, hey? Yeah, like I've sat in some, uh, over, over in the US in particular, some great spas, mm. big spas, mm, chatting with people things. from all around the, around the world. Long term, I have to say pool. Okay. But For exercise? Yeah, and yeah. just more fun. Yeah, yeah. Kids in there and it's Australia. Things. Yeah. Yeah, let's be honest. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Awesome. Well, thanks very much for oh, coming cool. on the podcast. We're done. That's it. That's yeah. it. No Excellent. serious questions in that one. Excellent. Um, we really love having you on. So, yeah, make sure you keep up to date with all of the social media updates with ICN. You guys yeah, are so, on top of it all the time. Yeah, so ICN, we want to be on the Insta page, which mm-hmm. is ICNQLD, and on that ICNQLD community um, closed group page. Yep. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And if you're naughty, you'll get kicked out. Yeah, no one's naughty. Yeah. You have to be really naughty though. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, if you need to contact me anytime, uh, like send me a message either on Messenger, Jason Woodforth. There is that Jason Woodforth ICMQLD Prez. Mm-hmm. That's a deleted account, but I can't actually delete it. Um, and uh, yeah, just straight Jason Woodforth, send me a Messenger message or give me a call or send me a text uh, 0403 498 or email is QLD at iCompeteNatural.com. Wonderful. Yeah. Thanks so much. That's Lovely right. to have you on here. My pleasure. Thanks for having Hopefully me Hopefully next again. time we'll have her with us. We will. Yeah, we'll be. We'll have her for season B. Yes. She'll, she'll be out. Yeah, she'll yeah. Pop. Competing. No. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Ciao, ciao.